Hello everyone, how are we all doing today? This is Beatrice. We're supposed to start this live at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is also 3 p.m. Um, GMT plus one or West African time, like they call it. So how are we all doing today? I'm super excited to be here. Again, this is Beatrice, your host with Canada International Work and Study Resource Center. And I have a wonderful topic for you today. So if you are new here and you haven't been listening, Please listen to our other webinars and for people who are watching the replay, thank you. This is Beatrice, your host with Canada International Work and Study Resource Center. We are a reputable Canada, Canadian consultancy firm and we help you with a smooth transition to Canada to avoid regret. We are ethical, we are reputable, we are RCIC licensed and we bank on integrity. Um, if this if this is your first time joining us, I would love you to do just two things for me. First of all, follow us on all social media platforms. Welcome, welcome. Follow us on all social media platforms and also book your consultation with us on how to start that Canadian dream. Uh, I'm super excited to, you know, uh, to have our team assist you with your Canadian dream. Welcome, welcome. I see one person online. Thank you so much for joining. Again, this is Beatrice, your host with Canada International Work and Study Resource Center. We will help you with all your Canadian uh, processes with respect to studying, immigration, or finding work in Canada. So today our topic, as you can see from the banner, is top 10 reasons why you should choose Canada over the United States. And I will be listing those 10 reasons. So before you proceed, I just want you to do two things. I want you to turn off all distraction because this is a lifesaver. And I always say this in most of my webinars that if I had someone who could speak to me just before I started off my Canadian journey, it would have made life so easier for me and it would have made me save some time. Uh, so I just want you to turn off all distraction, turn off those uh, pictures and stuff and just focus full time. And if possible, get a pen and paper. You're in for a treat because I'll be taking you on the ride. I'll be listing things as well as with statistics, as well as percentages and numbers on why you should choose Canada over the United States. This is with respect to immigrating permanently. This is with respect to studying. This is with respect to finding a job. Who is ready? <laughs> if you're ready, I want you to say hi in the comment section. If you're ready, I want you to say hi in the comment section if you are ready. Who is ready today? Who is ready today? Let me make sure are my lights. Oops. Okay. Okay, so let's go. So number one on our list is safety. So we all know that a lot of Nigerians are actually running out of Nigeria because they have a like a ton, like you know, they have a ton of um, crime rates going on, kidnapping, robbery attacks. It's pretty like the the government isn't really doing much in that country. Um, now I said over the United States. I just wanted to start with Nigerians because most of our audience is Nigerians watching. Hello, welcome, welcome. Um, United States, according to statistics, and this is Google, it's shown that 39.03, Canada is 39.03% safer compared to 54% in the United States. And keep in mind, in Canada, they do not legalize carrying weapons like they do in the United States. So Canada is safe. It's safe for your daughters. It's safe for your sons. So if you're looking to sponsor your daughter to Canada for studying or you're looking to sponsor your son to Canada to study, it is extremely safe. I, I literally, I literally schooled in Canada. And um, so far, the only experience I had where I had to call the cops. Hello, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy you joined us today. I was talking about the top 10 reasons to live in Canada um, rather than living in the United States, right? Um, in terms of studying or immigrating, okay? So I was just, the only time I had issues while I was in Canada um, was when I was living with a uh, I was cohabiting with a group of colleagues and um, I don't know if they know the law. They were Arabians and all that. Like they, they were not Nigerians. They were uh, not even Caucasians. They were from like Arab nations and, you know, the West Indies and all that. So um, this guy just drank. And this is what I always, always say. Please go listen to our previous webinar where I talked about different, you know, how to navigate the Canadian system, um, how to, you know, enjoy the Canadian life and all that. I actually talked about the lease. I didn't read the list properly and the lady who was cohabiting with me, she was a lady. And then when she left, um, the landlord allowed um, a male resident. And I'm like, hey, but he's like, oh, the lease says anyone can live with, with, with anybody here. It's not restricted to gender. So I was like, okay, no problem. Um, I had to accept my faith. And then this um, specific guy drank and he was drunk and he was banging my door. I had to call the cops and in less than 60 seconds. The cops arrived at, in front of my house and they had to... 
um, they had to caution the the male. Um, uh, welcome, welcome. They had to caution the male. They had to caution the male uh, occupants and told him, "Hey, you have to respect yourself. You're living with other people, and as per the lease, you're supposed you're not supposed to actually knock on someone's door, especially if they haven't consented." So these are. I'm just telling you that Canada is extremely safe. In such a situation, I was able to get a hold of the police. This person was heavily drunk, so they've lost. Thank you so much. Aro Wolo Ayodiji Idris, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for sending it. I really appreciate that. So uh, if you want to start your consultation with us, feel free to start your consultation with us. We're happy to assist you and get that smooth transition to Canada. Okay, we'll have tons of value for you. Like I said, we're ethical. And we're RCIC licensed. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Wow, I see four people online today. Thank you, thank you. So moving on, Canada is very safe, right? So from our topic, top 10 reasons why Canada is extremely safe. You can walk 2 a.m. I'm not advising you to walk 2 a.m. at night, but you could walk anytime. And it's pretty safe. They always have patrol. Uh, they have patrol services on campus, off campus, even, uh, even at the shops, they always have the police monitoring the system. Before you get into their system, they do proper screening, proper biometric. They do their best. I'm not saying it's 100% perfect. We've heard of some weird cases where they were shooting in certain areas in, in Canada, but it's not often compared to the United States. So for safety, and, and even compared to Ukraine, right? We heard of the Ukrainian war, and we're seeing that Canada is actually helping so um, it's helping occupants in Ukraine. They're helping with refugee services. So you can see that this country has invested in safety, okay? Canada is safe. Why are people from Ukraine running to Canada? Why are people from Turkey running to Canada? Even people in the US are running to Canada because it's extremely safe, okay? They have zero weapon. I, right now, um, they've actually banned the rifle as well. Like they used to, they used to allow people carry rifles. It's banned now in Canada, just to try to ban that for the safety of its citizens as well as its residents, okay? So Canada is extremely safe. Number two on our list is Canada is multicultural. Canada is highly welcoming compared to the United States. We've heard about stories here and there with respect to racism in the United States. Most of the people in Canada are immigrants, aside from the native Indians or people who call them First Nation people, most of the people in Canada are immigrants. And you would always see people from your background, right? There is no Nigerian that has, like me, when I went to Canada, the first set of people I met were Nigerians, right? So Canada is highly multicultural. You can learn different cultural backgrounds and different, different foods. Oh, my goodness. The food was amazing. I remember the first time I had to take burger and um, uh, double double. Double double is a drink. Uh, they said it's at Timmy's. I was like, oh, a lot of people say, oh, I want double double. Welcome, welcome. I see that. Whoa, we're having a lot of people today. We're in for a treat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, the food is highly multicultural. Kind of welcoming. I've had one of my Caucasian friends, like I cook jello fries. You guys know I'm Nigerian, yeah. Uh, and I cook jello fries. And uh, the Caucasian said, she's like, hmm, this, this looks so spicy. Like, <laughs> that's how, like, go to us, we're like, oh, it's delicious. So it's like, it's a bit spicy. You have a lot of pepper and all that in it. So, Canada is multicultural. People are highly welcoming. They accept you for who you are and they accept your culture. Okay. And um, another good thing is, even if you have some technical barriers here and there as a result of your culture, culture they are welcoming in the sense that they have services that would help you they would have services that would help you to incorporate yourself into their system and that is very good i remember there was a time i was having a little bit of difficulty understanding white people like i felt like the Caucasians. i felt like they were speaking too fast i had to go for some classes here and there to better train me in my listening i had to take the self exam as well to help me in my listening so they are very multicultural they have tons of services that will accept you into their system and if you're having difficulty you can always reach out to the services and they'll be able to help you especially Nonprofit organizations. Uh, the reason I always talk about nonprofit organizations is because my first job I got it from a nonprofit organization as an international student. So yeah, so that's number two. And please choose Canada over the US because a lot of Nigerians say, Oh, I want to go to the US. I want to go to the US. I want to go United States. You ask your Nigeria, where do you want to go? You US, US. No, choose Canada. Choose, 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 choose Canada. Okay. Number three is low cost of living. Compared to houses in the U.S., trust me, especially as a student or as a temporary resident or foreign national, as you usually refer you as, um, the, the cost of living is extremely low. Like, um, I remembered while I was in the University of Windsor when my parents could no longer afford paying for the dormitory. The dormitory is the university residence. It's close to the university. Most people live close to the university, and it was pretty high. So I'm like, you know what? I have sons of my friends who live a little few blocks close to the university, and they don't pay as much money as I pay. So I rented, it was $500 per month. Now, remember, with the Canadian lease, you have to pay two months up from the first and last month's rent. Please make sure you read the lease. Please go listen to previous webinars. If this is your first time watching, Arowolo 
Ayodeji. Deji. So if this is your first time watching, please go listen to our previous webinars. We'll talk about career opportunities. We talked about we talked about so many things here. Navigating job markets, succeeding as a student. Please go listen to that. It's gonna help you. So the cost of living is pretty is pretty pretty low, especially with housing. I paid five hundred dollars. Like imagine paying two thousand dollars for residence in the university, and then you're paying five hundred. Like you know. It's pretty cheap compared to 200. And now keep in mind as an international student, you're paying for tuition all by yourself. You're paying for um, food, you're paying for clothing, you're paying for books and the list of it. So you're paying for a lot of things. So if you could save up on your accommodation, uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty beautiful. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good compared to the US. Student, I'm, I'm hearing students in the US, some of them pay like close to $2,000 in low cost homes. They call it low cost homes or like Airbnb. They pay, I'm like, no, that's too much. What, what is it luxury, especially people who live in California in the United States? I'm like, that's a lot of money. But then compared to Canada, like you have Canada and both of them are like brothers and sisters. Don't get me wrong. US and Canada, like when I used to live in, in uh, Windsor, Detroit is just like, it's just the border. You just have to cross the border and you're in Detroit. So it's like sister and brothers, but I'm telling you to choose the country that will be better for you. It's going to help your sanity. <laughs> you know, I've, I've visited Detroit. I've gone to Michigan once. I'm like, I'm never going there again because I saw people with weapons and I was on the bus and I was all shaky. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Everybody has guns. Uh, but not in Canada. You would you would even you will never see anybody with weapons in Canada except people who are like armed forces, the police, and people in law enforcement. Okay. So um, and also uh, with respect to affordable um, affordable uh, cost of living, the food prices as well. The food doesn't inflate a ton of inflation like they do in Nigeria, where things are always going up by the day. No such thing. I remember like in Canada, I used to buy water. I used to buy like a bottle of water. I bought that bottle of water from 2012 till 2021. It was the same price. So inflation, there's not, there's not a lot of inflation. The country, they, they have a way of controlling it. Canada also offers scholarship for international students. Please use our services. That's why CIWSRC, we're here. We're here to help you with all that. So if you have issues with scholarships and you're looking for funding, you don't have tons of funds right now, that's why we're here. Send us a DM and we'll go ahead and assist you with that. Okay. And number four, it's the advantage of bringing your dependents. I love this about Canada. Welcome, 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 welcome. I see more people coming in. Thank you for the likes. I would really love to have your questions as well. You can drop your questions in the comment session and I'll be picking your questions one after the other when we're done the session. Thank you. So Canada have the ability to allow you bring your dependents. So let's say, like, let's say you're immigrating, like you're trying to study, say you want to study for your postgraduate, like master's or PhD and you have people and you have children, they call them minor who are below the age of 18 guess what you are they're able to go to school free school most of the schools is public schools and it's usually elementary school high school so free education for your children right the minors minors if they are above 18 yes you they, you have to pay for their sleep permits and stuff because they're considered an adult but for mine for minors for minors people who are below 18 years of age you're able to bring them along yourself that you can, can bring them along with you to, to canada and the good thing about canada even even after you're done school or when you're in school you can also sponsor your spouse for people who are married so let's say you're doing your master's right and you want your husband like you've stayed in canada for a year and you want your husband to be around you right because of long distance and all that you can actually sponsor your spouse to come and work or to come and study if you're looking for the services you don't understand expecting a representative to come yeah definitely we're going to give you a call ara wale iodg idris don't worry about that i'll probably Probably when I'm done this webinar, I'll probably get on a call with you, not a problem. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I kind of lost my train of thoughts. <laughs> where, where was I again? Okay, ability to bring your dependent. So, and, and when you're a permanent resident as well, like they have, uh, uh, this will be a topic for tomorrow. I'll be talking about leveraging sponsorship as a means of immigrating to Canada. You are able to bring your grandparent. They have a stream to bring grandparent. They have a stream to bring your parent. They have a stream to bring your sibling. They have a stream to bring your cousins. That is if you become a permanent resident. It's only, you can only bring your spouse when you're a foreign national and you're studying or you're working. That's when you can live as well. You have to be a permanent resident to be able to sponsor your parents, your siblings, your brother, your uncle, but it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And this brings me to the next um, to the next point. We're currently at number five, and that is the wait time. You see, what I love about Canada is that they don't have long wait times. 
they don't have long wait times like the United States. I, I remember I had a friend who was going to um, who was going to work in in um, the United States, and it took him 15 years. It took him 15 years. First of all, it took him some years. Hello, I tested a few weeks ago requesting information and no response. Your business, this is credibility when information is not provided in a timely manner. Blessings to you. Oh, very sorry about that, Mr. C. Welch. Very sorry about that. Probably um, it was uh, it was probably a miscommunication or someone didn't follow up. But but like I said, when I'm done the webinar, I will get on the call with you and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it up from there. Sorry about that. We've had tons of clients all week and probably they're, you know, I don't know. It could be one, one thing or the other. We probably missed it or something. I don't know, but I'll definitely get in touch with our management. And uh, yeah, but I can actually get on a call with you uh, if you can exercise some patience when I'm done the webinar. I could get on the call with you and we could start your process. Very sorry about that. So um, so number six on our list is the wait time, right? So the wait time, the wait time in Canada, it's not as as it's not as crazy and long like the United States. Like, you, like there was a time, I remember there was a time back in 20, was it 2016, 2017, when Donald Trump was the incumbent president in the United States. Oh, I had a lot of my Mexican friends complaining that I oh, heard they can't they can't they can't bring their family. Some people had to wait 10, 15, 16 years before they could see their family. Canada does not have such long wait time. That that that's a lot of wait time, especially if you're married, right? You, you know, it, it's very, very painful and sad when you're family is is not with you in canada so th that's that's the reason i'm saying choose canada over the u.s because the u.s have bought the, the wait times is very bothersome like it's too long of a time even right now to get your to get your u.s uh, green green card i'm hearing it could take up to 10 20 years now if you are persistent it's possible if you follow through the process but the, the process is extremely uh, uh, daunting. It, it, it's extremely daunting. It takes a, a long period of time. And uh, we don't want to go through that. The good thing about Canada is within two, three years, as long as you follow due process, you can get that. I'm talking of permanent residence and Canadian citizenship. You can get that. Uh, for study, for study, it takes two to three months. It doesn't take a long time. Okay, it doesn't take a long time. So yeah, choose Canada over the United States for that. And uh, let's go to number seven. Number seven on our list is the healthcare system. Oh my goodness. The healthcare system in Canada is top notch. Now, I don't understand that in Canada they don't allow you to be like, as a foreign national, you can't study medicine in Canada. And that is because you have to be a Canadian or a permanent resident. But hey, if it's your dream, come on, push on, get your do your study, get your permanent resident, get your Canadian citizenship, and you can go back to school to be a medical doctor. The good thing about the healthcare system in Canada is it is so great. Like, it's so affordable. Once you have your green shield, like, like I, I am now a permanent resident and I, I have the ability to move in and out of Canada. I'm always traveling. Like I'm a voyager. Uh, and excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, but once you have your health card, once they see the health card, you're good to go. If you want to give birth to a child, if you want to get medicine, although they have some a prescription that has to be doctor prescribed uh, medication it has to be doctors prescribed but as long as you have your green shield as an international student you're paying for health and your tuition so make sure you get your green shield that's why i always tell you go and utilize international student center services the healthcare system is very affordable you need to get you're able to access medication and the moment you call the paramedic they are at your at your back end core they, they come to your house right away there was a time i was not feeling too well while in the university of windsor and uh, um was is it the student advisor services they called the paramedic and within two seconds the paramedic was at the university and they just took me to the hospital i was kind of having a mental breakdown at the time but yeah <laughs> i'm glad i'm all good now yeah uh university stress sometimes can be real that's why i'm teaching you all this so you you know you're able to have like that smooth transition and you're well prepared for what life has to offer for you in canada okay so yeah the healthcare system is unbeatable i would say better than the united states yeah yeah, the only the only thing is uh, Canada doesn't actually allow you to study medicine in their country. You have to become a Canadian and write the MCAT and all that. Make sure you pass all the requirements, and then yeah, you're good to go. But can can the Canadian healthcare system is unbeatable? Yes, I said so. And number where are we? Where are we? We are number eight. Number eight. Number eight is they have world class universities. So if you go on Google right now and type ten best universities in the world, there must be a, a Canadian university with definitely definitely pop up. We have the University of Toronto, we have University of York, we have um, 
uh, University of Regina in Saskatchewan. So we have tons of wonderful university. And it's not just the university. This university have tons of great um, services to offer you as a student. And they're going to immerse in you value that will make you become a better person to your world. That way you can bring value to your world, right? So they, 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 they bring so much value to you as a person and so that you would bring that value back to the world. I, I know one of, one of the world-class business um, inventor right now, I can't remember his name off the back of my head. I follow him on LinkedIn. He actually schooled in a in one of the universities, although he works with World Bank now, he actually schooled in one of the universities in Canada. And there are tons of, not only him, there are tons of people who school in universities in Canada that are doing massively really well in the world. They're taking over the world. So, hey guys, I'm, I'm just, you know, I want you to take advantage, take advantage of the universities in Canada. And you never know where it could take you to the world. I also have a friend of mine who she's actually earning close to 10 figures in, in US dollars. Yes, in US dollars. And she, she's working with big Fortune 500 companies right now. She's she's a LinkedIn sensation. She actually schooled in my university, University of Windsor, right? So she schooled in my university, University of Windsor, and she was able to take over the world. She's into media and stuff. So the, can, the Canadian, and the good thing about the universities is the results are accredited. Please, if you're looking to study in Canada, make sure you come to us. So we'll make sure we check if the universities are accredited. You, just, you don't just want to go to any university. You want to make sure that the universities are accredited, okay? So the universities the universities in Canada are accredited. You can use that result anywhere in the world. You can use it in the United States. You can use it in the United Kingdom. You can use it in any European country. It is verifiable and it is, you, you guys know what I mean, right? That's why if you, you notice when people go back to Nigeria, go back to their home country with their results. They are well respected because there's no such thing as exam or practice. There's no such thing as, oh, the results were forged. The results are accredited. They are verifiable, okay? You did the job. Everything was from you. There is no such thing as my practice, okay? So Canada has one of the best universities in the world. And if I am you, like Mita, I would go ahead and send us a DM so we can start your application process and get you to that university of your dreams in Canada, okay? Uh, okay, so we are now at number number nine, I believe. Number nine, yeah. So we're now at number nine. <sighs> woof, 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 woof. Sorry about that. Okay, so number nine, uh, Canada has ten provinces. Okay, I have I have done I've done a webinar where I talked about every single province. I believe where I talked about Nova Scotia and all that. Please go listen to that webinar. Follow our CIWSRC page here on Facebook and bookmark our website ciwhrc.ca. There are tons of resources there for you that would help you better tailor you and position you so that you can succeed in Canada because it's a new home, it's a new environment. And if you don't know, what you don't know is always bigger than you. And what you don't know can actually overwhelm you. So you want to go take advantage of the resources you have that way you're well positioned and you're doing better amongst your equals when you're right, Canada. Although it does, we Nigerians, we adapt really easily. We adapt to, trust me, if you're a Nigerian, you can overcome what's going on in Nigeria. You can overcome in in the world that the world has to offer you but however it's good if you have sound education and sound knowledge so yeah so the good thing about canada now i'm not saying the united states don't have more than 10 states and all that i'm just telling you they are like canada has 10 provinces so you have numerous options you have a variety of options to choose from so let's say you're in ontario you don't like ontario you can go to british columbia because of the weather right british columbia is warm right um and if you're tired of uh, british columbia you you can go to uh, Alberta. If you're tired of Alberta, you can go to Saskatchewan. So 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 Canada has ten provinces. So the variety of options for you to to um, take advantage of uh, as many services as you like. So let's say you don't like the the uh, accommodation in a specific province, you can always move to another province, and you're not restricted to get a. Um, as long as you're, you're, you have your permanent residence, you have your permanent residence, as long as you have a legit status, be it a study permit or a work permit, you can use that in any other province. You don't have to renew that to go to another province or renew something to go to another uh, state. Uh, okay, so um, I just wanted to buttress that, that, hey, Canada has a variety of provinces to choose from compared to the U.S. Now, the U.S. have different states. Um, yeah, the U.S. have different states, but it can be pretty challenging when you're moving from one state to another, especially between Texas and Michigan. Because when I went to Michigan, Michigan is a little bit different from California. So, uh, however, compared to Canada, I would say Canada is a little bit more flexible. Uh, it's pretty much the same laws across provinces, but uh, in terms of immigration, it varies between provinces because certain provinces have certain immigration laws. The only province that is different is Quebec because Quebec kind of, it kind of looks like it's on its own. Uh, it follows its own rules compared to the federal laws and all that. However, 
just giving you the information that Canada has 10 provinces to choose from. And yeah, I would say you should choose Canada over the US. Now, the final point, this is the 10th reason. Have you been following me and have you been taking notes? Have you been following me and have you been taking notes? Say hi. Have you been following me and have you been taking notes? Say hi in the comment section. I would love to see, okay? Um, so the great thing about Canada is they don't have long wait times, okay? They don't have long wait times. I think I mentioned it before. And hey, the international passport, the Canada international passport is powerful. You can use the Canadian international passport to travel to over 152 countries. It's it's powerful as the British passport, as powerful as the, as, as the passport of the US. I'm going to give you a call, Arowolo. Ayo, Deji, if you could please be patient with me. Once I'm done the webinar, I would go ahead and give you a call and we'll get started with your questions or concerns you have with respect to immigrating into Canada, okay? So please bear with me as alongside uh, Mitha C. Welch. Uh, and I apologize for the delay um, since you said you've been trying to request information, but you had no response in a few weeks. Okay, so just wrapping up. So yeah, this is the 10th reason. So I, I remember our topic is the top 10 reasons to choose Canada over the United States. The 10th reason is Canada has one of the highest, oh my goodness, in terms of their passport power, they have one of the um, uh, highest um, uh, um, international passports. The international passport is powerful. Now for people who, who are able to wait after school, you get your permanent residence. After you get your permanent residence, you're able to reside in Canada three years physically out of five years. Uh, you are able to apply and become a Canadian citizen, and then you get your international Canadian passport. So just wanted to let you know that the Canadian passport is extremely powerful. You can use it to travel to over 152 countries. It's like access, man. Canada opens the door for you to, you know, be able to go to anywhere you want to go to in the world. You can travel anywhere you want to travel in the world. And Canada has opportunities with respect to if you want to, if you want to become a Canadian and you want to uh, become a Canadian via the entrepreneurship pathway, you're able to pay 250000 $300,000 by all means do that and come to Canada but hey seek our services send us a DM and uh, one of our, our management team would get in touch with you and ensure you get your smooth transition to Canada okay so yeah that's that's wonderful so I'll just quickly give you the summary uh, the top 10 reasons to live in Canada over the US Canada is safe Canada is welcoming Canada has low cost of living ability to bring your dependents with you Canada have, a, have an unbeatable healthcare system Canada has world class universities um uh, uh, Canada um, has um, one of the best international passports. Canada has 10 provinces to choose from. Canada has a short time in terms of um, application process if you want to apply to Canada. Canada has the ability for you to work in their country as a student, you're able to work. And even when you're done school, you're also able to work. They give you what is called a postgraduate work permit. Now we'll be elaborating that on a different webinar where I will be teaching you how to understand the postgraduate work permit. Now, that is when you're done with the school. Do you actually know the law and the rules with respect to that do you know that what you can you only get that once in a lifetime so all these things will be discussed in a different webinar so this is the end of our webinar so if you have any questions i would like you to send me your questions in the comment section and i'll be happy to um i'll be happy to um answer your questions yes i'll be i'll be more than happy to call you after this webinar um and uh we'll take it up from there uh, thank you so much. Um, do you have any questions or concerns? Again, this is Beatrice, your host. I'm your expert panel uh, host with, Red, uh, um, with Canada International Work and Study Resource Center. And I teach you everything in Canada as an immigrant. I actually started off my journey as a student in Canada and I transitioned to the immigrant status, which is permanent residency. And this has actually given me more opportunity for me to be able to travel in and out of Canada and uh, fulfill some of my dreams. And um, still in the process of getting my Canadian citizenship and I, I hope uh, you are able to um, use our services and transition smoothly to Canada. Like I said, CIWSRC, we're ethical, we're integrity, we're bank on integrity, we're ethical and we're reputable. We're one of the best consultancy firms and we're very, very affordable, trust me, um, compared to other consultants in the world. Now we're RCIC licensed, so any consultants you want to use, I will always advise, check. The government of Canada trusts them. Check, okay? The government of Canada trusts us. We're very, very, very reputable. We're RCIC licensed. Okay, so we have a question coming here from Ayodeji Idris. We have a question. Thank you so much, Ayodeji, for your question. I really appreciate it. So 
What piece of school are you in partnership with? That's a wonderful and a fantastic question. And I really appreciate you for taking your time to watch this webinar because I actually saw you watching all the way from the beginning. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. So we're currently we're affiliated with a lot of a lot of schools. We're affiliated with schools in Ontario. So Ontario is a province in Canada. Like I said, we, they, there is 10 provinces in Canada. So we're affiliated with all the universities in Ontario, University of Windsor, University of uh, York. Uh, York University is what they call it, University of Toronto, Seneca College, any of the universities. So we're affiliated with them, so which means there's a guaranteed admission for you. Uh, we're also affiliated. So if you don't want to if you don't want to school in Ontario, you want to school in Alberta, we're affiliated with the University of Alberta. If you're not um if you're not happy with, uh, oops, sorry about that. If you're not happy with Alberta, you want to go to British Columbia. We're affiliated with schools in 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 in, in uh, British Columbia. So any of the any of the universities in any of the provinces, um, feel free to send us a DM. Like I'm gonna actually hang hop on a call with you, um, to get uh, proper questions so I can send that to my manager team I mean, and they'll take it up from there to start your, um, your application process with Canada International Work and Study Resource Center. Okay. So uh, any other question? Uh, Aro, Aro Wolo Hayodeji, I hope I answered your question and I hope you're satisfied. I uh, would love to see your comments. Any other question for me before we call it a day? Is there any other question for me before I call it a day? Any other question for me before we call it a day? And I want to thank every single person who viewed this webinar. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch us today. I really, really appreciate you. Tomorrow we'll also be having a webinar. Tomorrow we'll also be having a, another webinar that, that will be more about sponsorship or any other topic as, uh, as we get the questions coming in, okay? So if there is no question, again, this is Beatrice with CIWSRC. I'm your host and uh, Canada International Work and Study Resource Center. We are your reputable go-to, go-to consultancy firm. We help you with a smooth transition to Canada. We have airport pickups. We have good reform policy. We are RCIC licensed, we're reputable, and we're bank on integrity. So if you're looking to meet any of your immigration needs or move to Canada, we're always here. You can always feel free to send us a DM and go ahead and assist with your immigration needs, okay? Until tomorrow, see you. Thanks for having me. Again, I'm your host with Canada International Working and Social Resources. Thank you and have a good rest of your day. Bye. Okay, there's no more question. I will be stopping the webinar. Just want to quickly take track, keep track of the, um, the candidates here so I can give them a call. Mitha C. Welch and IODG. Okay, thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.